beautiful night at the Iowa Speedway to come here in this country of freedom that has been supported by our men and women who have served our country faithfully. We're thankful for a great year that we've had so far, and we pray that this final night of the season might just be a great night that everybody might be on top of their game and that we might have a good race. We pray all of this in the name of your son. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Waterloo, Iowa, Sydney Dams. Oh, so can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale Rollers fight O'er oh, the ramparts we've watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? For the What a big moment for that young lady right there, learning how to honor our country in such a beautiful way at such a young age. We'll be back with the command to start engines here at Iowa when we come back. and then a lower third. The day is the day. Tell them we gonna do it our way. Yo, tell them again, tell them again. The day is the day, listen. We gonna do it our way. We gonna do it, we do it. We don't care what they say. Listen, because today is the day. The day is the day. <laughs> 
Welcome back to the NASCAR Xfinity Series U.S. Cellular 250. And trust me, some drivers to get ready for the race, they play it loud. And we're about to hear it loud here tonight at the Iowa Speedway. 250 laps here tonight. And DJ, we're going to be able to see what they can do with uh, what, they're, what they're about to encounter here, which is a racetrack in nighttime conditions on a short track. It's kind of back to the history of NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, they're ready for the sun to go down after that qualifying session in very hot temperatures here this afternoon. But it will go through a little bit of a change because the temperature is still in the track right now. They're looking forward to whenever it cools off sun, they can find a little bit more grip and search around on this racetrack for grip. So that's going to be the biggest thing they're going to encounter and making changes throughout the night. And it is one of the largest contrasts between the race we saw here in June and the race they'll be doing tonight. That was in the heat of the day, and it was a hot day, and tonight they'll have those cool nighttime conditions. Yeah, and a lot of the drivers were telling me they really expected to, to maybe be around the bottom, but because they've seen a different racetrack than what they were really expecting, we've heard a number of them talk about it uh, in our countdown show that they may move up the racetrack, and that's what they're really wanting to do because it makes it a lot more fun, a wider track. It means a lot more racing. And staying with the theme of the track just a little bit, there will be a competition caution at lap 40 tonight because they made some repairs to the racing circuit surface overnight. NASCAR fully expects it to be race ready and able to handle the 250 laps here tonight, but they will throw the competition caution at 40 just to check things out here at the Iowa Speedway. As we get set to go, seven eighths of a mile, it is a large short track, a unique venue, but everywhere we go for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, nothing happens until the drivers light them up. And so let's go back trackside and go to the command to start engines here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, here to give the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome tonight's Grand Marshals and U.S. Cellular customers, Mark Hickson, Mark Ostrike, Mike Smith, and Kevin Woodyard. Drivers, start your engines! Hey, uh, Mike, what about... I think those guys like to play it loud too. Well done, gentlemen, getting us started here at Iowa. When we come back, the pace laps and a chance to start at Iowa. <clears throat> Back with you at the Iowa Speedway, the pace car just rolling off to get this field set on a few pace laps before they get the green flag to start the racing action here tonight. Let's take a look at today's starting grid brought to you by U.S. Cellular. 
The front three, we talked about them before. The front row of Daniel Suarez and Eric Jones. And third tonight, keeping the tradition going, Dakota Armstrong. Yeah, 10th time they've been like that, but uh, Elliot Sadler, former winner here in 2012. Brad Keselowski, three-time Iowa winner and the only cup driver in the field. Next to Josh Berry, late model driver for Junior Motorsports, finished seventh last, restart, last start at Richmond in the Xfinity Series. Yeah, starting seventh, our winner here in June, Sam Hornish and Brendan Gaum. Always exciting to watch. Drew Herring, his first start for the 2018 this season, and Darrell Wallace Jr., four top tens in five Iowa starts. Yeah, and Justin Allgaier back in 11th. Has come close a couple of times this year. Really wants to get that first win. And Ross Chastain battling for that final 12th spot in the chase. And right behind him, there is Blake Cook. He is battling with him as well. And Ryan Reed in row seven. Now row eight presents someone we didn't think we'd see back there. Ty Dillon, DJ. Let's see if you can call him up. Hey, Ty. Dale Jarrett in the booth. You have a copy? Yeah, buddy. I got the light clear. All right. Hey, Ty, you finished second here back in June. What's it going to take for you to get up there tonight and battle for a win here? Yeah, we're definitely going to have to get a track position back. We didn't uh, we didn't qualify where we thought we would with this fast first Chevy, but it was really good practice yesterday. We always seem to race really good here. So just got to mind our, mind our P's and Q's here, not tear the fenders off of it, get to the front like we did last race, just get one, one spot better here. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Hey, Ty, looking at the racetrack, one and two, a lot of sunshine still down there, three and four getting a little bit of shade. What kind of problems does that present for you? Yeah, it's definitely going to make the, the corner a little bit more slick in the sun in one and two until we get fully shade. So hopefully that top will come in kind of early, and I'll be able to test it out trying to pass some of these guys. All right, thanks for talking with us. Have a good night. Thanks, buddy. Good to hear from Ty. He carries one of our five onboards here tonight. And let's run through them for you. A couple of different looks we're going to have for you. There's Brennan Poole, the DC Solar onboard camera. You ride shotgun with him. Back to Ty, who carries the Sunoco onboard camera. A nice look back from the dashboard. His teammate, Brennan Gone, with the US Cellular onboard camera. And then Brad Keselowski, the only Sprint Cup Series driver in the field tonight, carrying the Ford onboard. And rounded out by Eric Jones. He'll have the Toyota on board tonight. You ride to his right. So let's hear from Pit Lane before we go green. Here's Ralph. Dave, we heard Brendan Gaughan say earlier in his pre-race interview that he wants to run that upper groove. If you look at the racetrack behind me, that's that middle seam. That's where he's talking about. From a wide shot, it will be the third seam from the bottom. Now he's going to take advantage of this competition caution coming. He wants to use these first 40 laps to go up there, lay down a bunch of rubber, come in during that competition caution, put on the fresh set of tires, and then he's got his lane ready to go racing, Jim. You know, Ralph, many of the teams here tonight are utilizing Sprint Cup pit crews brought in from Pocono. A notable exception, however, Joe Gibbs Racing. All three Gibbs teams, the 18 right here of Dakota Armstrong, the 19 and the 20, using free agents, a rental crew, if you will. Pit Road is always a huge advantage for Joe Gibbs Racing. We will see if they can keep it from becoming a liability tonight. Jim, thanks. DJ, what do you think? How big a factor? Yeah, it could be a huge factor. Track position is going to be important, but they have fast race cars. If they don't lose too many spots or just hold their own, they'll be in good shape. And they have the track position right now. You see the first three Joe Gibbs racing cars, the 19 of Suarez, the 20 of Jones, the 18 of Armstrong. As the pace car leads them through turn three and now turn four, dropping down to the low side. The lights are off. That means the field is coming to green. They will get to the restart zone. And we are going to be green flag racing with the Xfinity Series from Iowa. Keselowski making it three wide to the inside. Yeah, Dakota Armstrong really spun his tires as he tried to power down right there. Gave uh, Brad an opportunity here. See if he can take advantage of that. Elliott Sadler is taking that third spot right now. Sadler powers through for third, but they're still side by side for the lead coming off four. Dixie Suarez trying to get back to the throttle hard. Couldn't quite get it all down, and Eric Jones is going to lead the first lap. Suarez not giving up. He dives back down to the inside. The pole sitter trying to regain that spot, trying to clear him off too. Now I'd have to say that this is uh, going to be interesting for everybody to see that that outside lane very good on this restart, on the start of the race here. And I believe uh, the driver was asked on the outside there about internal competition. I think he wants to beat his teammate. And he's going to clear him off for this time. Yeah, that's really impressive. Eric Jones was the fastest car in practice yesterday. All the buzz in the garage area was they were going to have to, whatever they were going to do, it was to beat this 20 car. 
if they were going to go to victory lane. We'll see how he can leg it out now. Just a couple of car lengths over his teammate at this point. And now Armstrong getting a challenge from Sam Hornish on the inside. You look back from Keselowski. Hornish clears. That will put him into fifth. Yeah, that's a good spot right there for Dakota Armstrong to just settle in, get some laps down. He made a good qualifying effort. Now let's see what the car will do during race conditions. As I said, this track's going to go through some changes. He'll have to help his crew keep up with that. Chris Gale, one of the best in there in doing that. Dakota Armstrong had never qualified better than 16th in his Xfinity Series career, or this season, until tonight. And he qualified third, and will try to follow through with it tonight. And the opportunity, we've spoken of it. Matt Tift was scheduled to drive this car for 13 races in 2016. And after three of them, had to uh, go in for emergency surgery, is still recovering, not racing yet. And uh, a couple of drivers have taken over for him, including Sam Hornish, the winner here in June, and now Armstrong again. Yeah, and speak of filling your car out, Brad Keselowski in the 22. He did get here to qualify this 22 car, but those were his first laps of the weekend. He so he's going to be seeing exactly what he has, knowing the track's going to go through a little bit of a change, but relaying that information to try to keep them in this race tonight. 50 laps were run in the 22 by Austin Terrio yesterday to set this car up for Keselowski. He did not make any practice, but he was here on time for qualifying and has been giving crew chief Brian Wilson his feedback ever since. Just a good look back at how Hornish is working it now and almost looks a little bit sideways coming off the corner. And we heard Sam say that yeah, he wasn't really concerned about not qualifying right up inside the top five there. He felt like that his car, and he was loose in practice. Uh, and I think that's probably what helps him, as he says, when he's not up front after qualifying, he usually does a better job. And that's because his car is kind of free and turns through the center, and that'll be a benefit through the night. And I was going to ask you, through the night, does the sun going down and the track gripping up and getting cooler, does that benefit that situation? Oh, it, no doubt about it. Uh, certainly, as more grip comes, uh, yeah, and you can keep up with the track, gives you that opportunity to do that. So uh, here we see Blake Cook down on the bottom trying to make a move around Brendan Gone. We're just about an hour from sunset here, so any sun conditions they're dealing with, they'll have to take care of just a little bit longer. As you see Cook now moving through for 12th, and there's Gone going to that high line like he talked about with Ralph. Yeah, he's trying to make it work extremely early here. Really one of the few drivers that I see up trying to really make that work right now. He may pay the price right at this point in time, but he knows that competition caution is coming, and so he can do that right now, get it kind of cleaned off, go in, make some adjustments, get ready to go after that. Third in line, the red four is Ross Chastain. First time he made it to final round qualifying this season and currently running in the 14th position. You see Ryan Reed now looking down to the inside, going to make a move, going into three. Reed needs something good to happen. Oh, close, coming off the corner. Was there contact? Reed gets a little bit loose. Chastain checks up, and there's one of those bubble drivers battling with him. Sieg moves through in the 39 car on the inside. Yeah, we talked about seeing them race around each other, but hey, that was very, very close. Ryan Reed, I think, thought he was in. Maybe his spotter cleared him. Tough spot off of turn four to, to be able to see that exactly, or maybe he just felt like that he was clear there. Uh, it's kind of nice that Ross Chastain gave him a little bit of room, and they were all able to straighten things out and move forward. Uh, lap 12 of 250, right, DJ? Long way to go. Uh, it, it really is. There's no reason to be pushing the issue right now. But these guys are, you know, they're competitive. They're, they're drivers. <laughs> and their job is to go out and pass whoever's in front of them. So Sieg, competitive as he is, took advantage of the opportunity. Now Reed's going to try to get one of those positions back. See, his car's pretty loose. You can see him actually down the center of the corner having to turn back to the right just a little bit, but able to drive it up off the corner pretty straight. Two Camaros and a Mustang battling each other. The Mustang looks like it's going to get the advantage at this point, and he clears Ryan Sieg off turn two. You can see Sieg get just a little bit on the, the free side there, the back end stepping out just a little bit. I think some of these drivers probably encountering, we talked about the sun, they'll be glad when it goes down to get a little bit more grip, but I believe it's also probably in their eyes as they go into turn three, so making it a little bit difficult on them right at this moment. Eric Jones leads in the 20 car. He got around pole sitter Daniel Suarez for the first lap, battled him and cleared him, and is the leader. NASCAR and NBCSN is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular gives you a stronger signal where the other guys don't. And by Toyota. Toyota, let's go places.
you're looking at a very strong Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. Putting cars a lap down right now. That's Eric Jones in the black and yellow number 20 as we welcome you back to the U.S. Cellular 250. Just getting around the only Iowa-born driver in the field. That's Joey Gase in the 52. But Jones, as we anticipated at what we heard in the garage area, DJ, one of the faster cars we're going to see here all night. Yeah, we saw him in practice yesterday evening uh, in that final practice, able to really run good lap times. And what we're seeing here as he encounters these uh, lap cars, he's able to make his car work and not lose a lot of time to Suarez or to Elliott Sadler running third as he dices in and out of this traffic. The split the difference there between the Black 89 and Morgan Shepard and three wide with Spencer Boyd in the 25 on the outside. Here comes Suarez looking for a way by lap traffic. Wow. Yeah, it's just short track racing. You have to take advantage and sometimes make some holes. Even though it's early in this race, he's running second. But you got to take that opportunity. You don't want that lead to, a leader to get too far away from you. The gap is just over a second now, and you can see it there between them. But as you say, you don't want to lose sight of that leader. Now, Suarez a little bit loose on the entrance to turn one down there. There's a big bump. There's a bump as you enter the corner, and then there's one in the very center of the corner. And so you have to negotiate both of those. You get in a little bit hard and get your car a little out of shape. Makes it a tough corner. Here comes Sadler, the third place car, that blue and white number one, making his way through the same lap traffic. Just over two seconds behind the leader. Now here, this is interesting. Fifth place, Brad Keselowski and Dakota Armstrong, uh, full of energy and desire tonight in the 18, going down to the inside. And doing exactly what we talked about he needed to do, settle into this race. Now he understands his car, he knows what he has, where he can make up time, and he goes around Brad Keselowski for that fifth spot. And Brad also knows it's a 250 lap race, and he's got a chance to get that car adjusted on coming up. Yeah, he understands they're going to you know, be 40 laps here. He's going to run. He's relaying to his crew what he needs to do or what they need to be looking to do uh, to help him out whenever they have that cost. They can make their changes then and make this 22 car better. DJ, we were talking about the opportunity that Armstrong has this weekend, jumping into equipment that is, is probably tenths, if not full seconds, faster than what he was running before. You've had an opportunity like that, even though it wasn't a one-off deal in your career in the past. What's it like? Yeah, you're always looking to, to better yourself and make changes. And I made a change in my career going from Joe Gibbs racing uh, to Robert Yates racing in 1995 to fill in for Ernie Irvin, who was injured. And you know, a lot of pressure comes with that. But as a driver, that's the opportunity that you want to get in with an organization, a team, a car that is accustomed to winning. And that's exactly what Dakota Armstrong has done for himself. Yeah, there's a lot that comes with that, a lot of eyes on you. Everybody's going to be seeing how he handles this situation tonight. As I talked to this young man yesterday, he was very confident in his ability. He was excited about the opportunity more than it was making him nervous. Dakota Armstrong, a fourth generation farmer from Newcastle, Indiana. Oh, by the way, he's also a pretty good racer. This has been his hobby. It's been a part of what the family does. And we've got caution on the racetrack. It is Daryl Wallace Jr. around in the six car. With the right rear. Wow. And you hear the report, there's the damage. Fired up here. And this is a driver that, as far as the chase goes, probably in pretty good position, sitting back in ninth, but has a big cushion as far as points. But he looked at this as an, uh, an opportunity race himself to run inside the top five, maybe give himself a chance at a victory here tonight. He had a good run here back in June. But it's, it's going to be a tough, you can see how much it looks like that he got loose off of turn two. 11th place he was running, uh, Dale, when uh, this happened. And yeah, that's a very critical part of these cars in the right rear there. It makes a lot of the side force, helps with the down force, gives the driver a better feel of his car. Ooh. Yeah, you can see, just gets loose, gets the right rear in the corner. He had a car up tight on his rear bumper. And here he is trying to save it. Yeah, he does keep it out of the inside wall, which is yep. good. Didn't make any more damage. Didn't, didn't hurt it any more than what he did off of there. But uh, that is, a, again, a lot of damage to this car. The Roush Fenway Racing crew going to work on the right side there repairing the damage and you know where aerodynamics are concerned this is a short track they come into play a little but they can probably get this car very raceable well they can get it better but still that's a, an area that the driver really leans on and and really needs to have a feel of security for him because we, we talk about speeds over 150 miles an hour here at the end of the straightaway leaders are going to work lap 30 here under caution we'll come back to the iowa speedway for the green flag
NASCAR Race View gives you access to features that let you follow your favorite driver as if you're at the track. Get live stats, leaderboards, driver and team communications, and more on all your devices. It's available now for an all-new low price when you visit nascar.com slash raceview. Dave Burns and Dale Jarrett with you here along with Jim Noble and Ralph Shaheen down on pit road. And DJ, with just nine laps to go before the competition caution, Nobody's just going to ride here, are they? Well, no, they're probably not going to take any extra chances, but we talk about how important pit road is not losing any spots there. Well, you don't want to go in behind already giving up a spot here. So we'll see some hard racing, but I expect uh, those drivers up front to use their heads in this type of situation. Jim Noble? Guys, down near in the pits of Bubba Wallace, all four tires are up, so they're not sure exactly what happened as he tries to catch up to the back of the field. Meanwhile, Brad Keselowski is concerned with not being able to run the low line. He is washing up the racetrack. His spotter, Joey Meyer, is trying to get him to kind of hook the corner like he feels the fastest cars are doing. But thus far, the car is too loose to accomplish that. They'll address that at the competition caution. Jim, great updates. And as we look at the front row, it looks like the start of the race, only this time the 20 car is the control car. He's chosen the outside line. That's how he got past pole sitter Daniel Suarez to begin the race. And he's got an even better start this time with that just a little bit of jump that the control car gets, DJ. Whoa, look at Suarez coming back. Yeah, Suarez, I thought that Jones had really made a good enough start that he was going to be able to clear, but uh, Daniel Suarez did a nice job of getting up to speed, staying right with him here. This race gets going again. Just a few laps of the competition caution, and they're fighting for every spot. Brandon McReynolds in the black 24, Jeremy Clements in the red numbered 51, and right ahead of them, Brennan Poole in the 48. You're on board with Brendan Gone. Brendan has slipped back quite a bit in this first run, but he's he's elected to stay up in that high groove, try to get uh, everything cleaned off up there, see if he can make that work after this competition caution. Three wide off the corner here. And you can prepare that high groove for yourself by running up there, right, DJ? Yeah, he can uh, get it. He's, that's what he's hoping, so <laughs> he's putting himself in a pretty tough spot here. Whoa, this is all for around 15th position, and they are three wide, three deep here. McReynolds trying to hold that spot in the 24. Boy, that's close. That's why the drivers love this racetrack, is the opportunity to race from the bottom up two and three grooves. And that's what they look for whenever they come here. McReynolds crosses the line in 17th that time, looking a little further back. They are still two by two as well. And there's Bubba Wallace in that blue and white six, six coming back after heading to pit lane for repairs. See Justin Marks there in the green and white, number 42. Did not qualify well and still running in the back of the pack. Look at Wallace. He wants to charge back to the front. And I've watched three drivers, Brennan Poole, looks like Ross Chastain and Blake Cook. They raced around here almost a full lap, three wide. Pretty incredible driving. Great stuff here at the Iowa Speedway. Here's Cook now peeking back down to the inside. Yeah, he certainly didn't get the qualifying effort that we're accustomed to seeing him. He's done a really, really nice job this year, but having to battle his way from the back here today. Ross Chastain slides in ahead of Brandon McReynolds, and there's the white and blue 62 of gone to the outside still. J.J. Yaley in the 44 now diving down to the inside. He'll try to get a piece of McReynolds. And he's got him. Yeah, Brandon doing a nice job, though, here at McReynolds. Uh, just through the, this first run, he'll be able to work on his car, see what he can do and make it a little better and compete throughout the night. Just the second race of the season for Brandon in the Xfinity Series. Won twice here last year in the k and Pro Series combination races, both from the pole. Glad to get a shot in the Young Guns 24 tonight. Oh, that's tight. Contact. Four into 62. Chastain and gone. They both save it. Yaley slips through. Really aggressive move, especially coming up at just a, a couple of laps here that we're going to have this competition caution. Yeah, but don't give anything up, right? Get it uh, while you can. Right. Yeah, well, they're racers, you know. They, <laughs> they dropped the green flag. It's time to go. J.J. Yaley saw an opportunity there and uh, took advantage of it. So as they spread out just a little bit here, NASCAR's getting ready to throw the competition caution. And as we see them still battling, J.J. Yaley's coming forward, man. His car's fast. Yeah, he's passed. We've seen him make passes on the inside here. He's working to the high side of Blake Cook. Now that competition caution is here. 
And so NASCAR told us they wanted to do that because in last night's race, there was a different uh, different compound of Goodyear rubber used in bias ply tires, takes to the track a little bit differently and actually pulled up horses of the track they wanted to repair. Yeah, we've kind of seen this every year whenever this happens, so it's not something they weren't prepared for. You know, this surface is 10 years old now. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that those tires pull it up in some certain areas. It really doesn't create any issues. It's just a matter of these drivers getting this Goodyear rubber back down where they want it and making this a wide racetrack. Uh, NASCAR does a really good job. There's only a few spots, most of them up in turns three and four, and the drivers will never really know the difference once they get a little rubber down. And there is the 20-year-old who is in control of this race, Eric Jones from Byron, Michigan, a young upstart that Kyle Busch ran into when he beat him on a short track, eventually put him into his equipment, He's gone on to big things already at Joe Gibbs Racing. Yeah, he's just an outstanding driver. But as we get through this, because Bubba Walsh did a great job getting himself back in the free pass position there. That's why he was racing hard. He's going to get back on the lead lap. They will come to pit road. The leader bringing everybody down. You see them dive to the left. They cannot pass through more than three pits before they hit their pit stall. And it looks like everyone's going to take tires and, and maybe some fuel, Jim. On your left, Brad Keselowski, who said he is sliding the front and all the, in, in addition to all the things we told you about not being hold the low line, it'll be four tires wedge adjustment for the 22 ahead of him by Dakota Armstrong. Not really any complaints about the car right now. Four Goodyear tires, Sunoco Racing Fuel. Ralph. Eric Jones is in. He takes on Sunoco Fuel and four fresh Goodyear tires. He's better in the center this time since that first caution. And he's a little snug in three and four, so they tighten him up just a smidge. That was a technical term they used, Dave. And Ralph, as we look at the Geico race off pit road, he will not be the first car off pit lane. Sam Hornish Jr. also took four. And we'll see what the deal was with J.J. Yaley. We'll be back with more racing here at the Iowa Speedway in a moment. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Xfinity. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. So we need to explain the jump that J.J. Yaley made in the 44 car. He had already pitted on the, uh, the last yellow. And so when he came to pit road this time, DJ, fuel only. 
That might also explain something else. Yeah, it, we saw him slicing and dicing through yeah. the field there, making a lot of moves, and you know those four fresh tires helped him do that. And then he was able, but they played the strategy perfect. Absolutely, uh, come in, get fuel, got him at, uh, got him off the pit road first that time. Nice move, Frank Kerr, crew chief, calling your man in, and then calling him in again and taking less time on pit road than everybody else. Yaley's been in a Toyota, actually been in a Joe Gibbs racing car before, so he, he might be familiar with some of the friends up front there. Yeah, he's going to do that. Sam Horner said they did a nice job on their pit stop to get him out. And we talked about the Joe Gibbs racing teams not bringing their cup guys uh, to pit this. Eric Jones there lost two spots in that first round. Of course, one of them was right. a fuel only deal. But basically cost him one in this case. We do know that Richard Childress Racing brought their primary crews for the two car, and Sam is the beneficiary in this case of that move. So coming to green, J.J. Yaley is the new leader of the U.S. Cellular 250, and he will take him off of turn four, pace car down onto pit road, and we're back underway in Iowa. Jones looking for an early opportunity. He'll stick the nose down there, but he will not get Yaley and throw the, through the turn off of the corner. Here comes Jones. More three wide racing than we normally see here. I mean, we've seen these drivers be very aggressive, but taking it down into the corner. Look at Whoa. this, little contact. Yep. Yaley into Hornish, Hornish saves it. And Yaley dropping back just a little bit now. As way down to the inside comes Ty Dillon in the three. Yeah, and one that's costing a lot there is Elliot Sadler in that mix. He's having to go to the outside to try to get around now, but he got into the back of J.J. Yelly down in turns three and four, costing some time. The Red 7 of Allgaier are looking for a place to go. Dakota Armstrong and Brad Keselowski side by side. Allgaier looks lower. And Justin's going to get that spot going into turn one. Josh Berry's going to try to come through in that purple and orange 88. Yeah, this is a short track racer that understands what these restarts are about, how, my, how you have to really get everything. We talk about this every week. Jeff Burton, Steve Latard talk about it all the time. You have to make your way and get all the spots that you possibly can on these restarts. Here's Berry now looking down to the inside of Armstrong. Armstrong will shut the door for now in the green 18. Drew Herring on the outside of the 28, doing a nice job, still running 11th. Jim with more on Josh Berry. Well, they made a laundry list of changes on that first pit stop on the 88 four tires track bar, left side wedge. He's tight center off. That doesn't sound like a big complaint, but it's really hard to kind of poke that final line at one end of the racetrack like you're talking. Right there, you see he's about a groove up of where he'd like to be for the fastest way around. But still, Josh Berry with only, with this is his first start this year, doing a nice job of the early going. Yeah, a lot of times, especially down in one and two, you hit, just as you hit that bump, you have to have the car really pointed right. If it's a little bit tight, you hit that, then you're going to use up more track. That's going to open up that bottom side if you're not careful for another driver to take advantage. Sam Hornish in the two, getting a challenge from his teammate Ty Dillon. This is back for 20th position, but they're not going slow. Brennan Gaughan was back down pit road just before we went back to green. Not sure why. Now he's making his way back through. Gaughan gets by his teammate, Brandon Jones. Ralph, when we go on board, we see a whole lot of bouncing out there. We're talking about that bump going down into turn one, Dave. It's a little bit different. Some people might think was it like Dover? Were you going to turn one at Dover? No, Dover's more like going off of a cliff and the car tends to drop down and into the corner. Here, when you talk to the drivers, it's more of what you would see at a supercross or a motocross where it's actually a jump that has a tent to have a lift at the top end of it that launches the car in. Now, we're talking about taking those wheels an inch or so off the ground. But, Dale, when you talk to the drivers, they say all four wheels are off the ground. And as soon as you hit, you're already turning into the corner. Yeah, I'm not a skier, but it's almost like a ski jump that you hit yeah. there sometimes. You feel like that you've got totally lost control. We're riding along with Brandon Poole here. You can kind of see how the car moves around. But this is a driver that's come from 25th to 11th right now, knocking on the door to get in the top 10. Outstanding job so far. 
Jim, he's cruising right now. Really is, and the thing about the 48 car is, is that first run that went, he got freer and freer and freer. So they tightened him up quite a bit on the pit stop with an air pressure and wedge adjustment, also track bar, and it seems to have brought that 48 car to life a little bit. 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th running there together. Brennan, Brennan's had a great view of that. Yeah, the one thing they'll have to be careful of, this track should tighten up a little bit later on uh, as it, the sun goes down and, and they get a little bit more grip with that, so they may have to take a little of that out. Unlike the cup cars, these drivers don't have that track bar adjustment inside that they can make, so it'll be something that the crew may have to unwind a little bit for him later. So as they settle things out, Barry in the eighth position now getting a challenge for Armstrong, from Armstrong that is, Dakota to the inside trying to take position eight away. And one thing Josh Berry comes into this race with in the 88 car is confidence. He runs a late model for Junior Motorsports on most weekends. Started 11 races this year, won seven of them. Yeah, he did outstanding talent. And this is kind of in his wheelhouse, if you will, of what he understands. Even though he hasn't been in these cars, it's something different. He got to, to a lot of laps yesterday. He, he's very good at relaying what the car is doing, what they were telling me, to get what he's looking for and understands what he needs to go fast. Before tonight at Iowa Speedway, Eric Jones had never led a lap. He's lead a led a bunch of them now. As we go to break, you ride with him, the man in charge at Iowa. Thanks for joining us tonight for NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing, the U.S. Cellular 250. And it's been a good one so far, the kind of short track action that we would expect at the 7 8 mile Iowa Speedway. And for Eric Jones, the resumption of the race was kind. For Elliott Sadler, it was something a little bit different, DJ. Let's go back and look at that restart. And Elliott's made a nice recovery since then. Yeah, this is exactly, he's in fourth spot right now, but he, that's where he restarted. But things got a little bit tight down here in three and four. As you can see him battling, a little contact between J.J. Yelly and Sam Hornis there. Elliott had to get out of the throttle, make sure nothing happened there. But that's why, making moves like that, he's come back, he fell back to six. Now he's back to fourth. Good, solid run. But that's exactly why he's finished in the top ten in every race he's ever run here 11 times. Ralph Shaheen. 
I talked to the crew down there as they got ready for that competition pit stop, and they said, you know what? We're just going to take four tires and fuel. The track was a little tighter than we thought it would be, but as the run went long, he got better. So they made no adjustments to the car. And when it comes to those quick reflexes behind the wheel, I think that comes from all that pickleball he's been playing. <laughs> Oh, back to practice yesterday. Ralph is right. Pickleball, which I, as I understand, is more of an indoor form of tennis in a smaller situation, but he says he gets a great workout from it. I, yeah, I guess he gets a good workout. I thought he played softball all summer, so it's just something new to me. I didn't even know about that. Right behind him, Ty Dillon. Not sure what sport he plays on the outside, but as an outdoorsman in his spare time, most of the time spent racing, and he's raced from 15th starting position up to fifth right now, DJ. I don't think we thought he'd have that good race car. No, but they worked extremely hard yesterday on their race setup. They made one little mock qualifying run. But I think the racetrack really surprised this driver and this team uh, how hot it was and how slick it was back in qualifying. But he told us in, uh, right before the race started, he was just going to have to work his way there, be patient. He's done that up in the top five now. Jim is covering the three car tonight. Well, guys, that's exactly what Ty Dillon has done. He has been patient. He was very frustrated after that qualifying effort. He didn't even make the final round. In the first run, he was real tight in the corner. Made sure everybody knew it. They made some big changes in that competition. Get caution pit stop. And now, not a word from Ty Dillon. A quiet Ty is usually a happy Ty behind the wheel. We see Nick Harrison on the left there, his crew chief. Nice job of recovering to get the car raceable for Ty before the start of the race. Yeah, and he's been the runner up in the last two short track races, so he's getting there. He gets himself in a position, and that's all that you have to do. Uh, Sometimes you're going to kind of knock that door down and go get that next victory for him. His teammate, Brandon Jones, is battling back here. David Starr in the 93, the 51 of Jeremy Clements, the 24 of Brandon McReynolds. We talk so much about these races within races at these track DJ. And if you come to these races and watch them live, you got your head on a swivel because there's action everywhere. Can't keep up with all of it out here right now. It's just amazing. You know, we got uh, these guys battling, and, and certainly there's a lot going on for each of them. Kind of things in different ways as you look at that. Just trying to move forward here tonight. Uh, Daniel Suarez has not let Eric Jones get out of his sight. Looks like whatever adjustment he might have made on his race car has made him faster in this second run. Clements looking to the low side with Mick Reynolds. Star fading to just the outside lane a little bit. And down that character filled backstretch where the cars undulate and, and rock up and down with the bumpiness. Yeah, you like character. I don't know if you want it all the way around the racetrack all the time, but where you don't ever get settled in the seat. But the drivers really do like this racetrack, and they would not want to change anything about it. It's just things, it's there for everybody. It's not like that it's fair for one and not for another. And this place is fascinating. Of course, it gets snow all winter long, but the track still takes care of the place. They shovel the snow off to take care of the racing surface during the winter as well. Yeah, they've done an outstanding job with it. And, and again, that's why they have two races here, because the drivers ask for that. They want that. The fans support it. There's great racing that we see, just like this right here. This is the battle for 21st, and a good one it is. McReynolds in the 24, Starr in the 93, Clements in the 51. And drivers talk about sometimes how racing can be fun. I would say back there, that's a good time. Yeah, that's what you look forward to doing. You know, when you were growing up as a racer, you raced on Saturday nights, you know, short track racing. This is what you did. This is where you learned your skills. How do I make a pass? Yeah, anybody can go down and knock somebody out of the way. But they're really racing hard. But what they're racing hard right now, Eric Jones is in their mirror. They know that they need to, to go put as many cars between them and this leader as they possibly can. On board with Jones, looking through to lap more traffic. He's got to weave his way through carefully, preserve the fenders on that race car as he moves through. Yeah, when you've got the fastest car here and you run up on a situation like this, you want to get through it as quickly as you possibly can, but you really don't want to put yourself in a bad spot. You don't want to knock a fender in on a tire, take a chance of something like that, but you've got to be aggressive. You know that Daniel Suarez is right there ready to take a, advantage of any mistake you might make. Suarez racing in his tracks, trying not to finish behind his teammate, 
trying to look for a way by. Right now, just sort of biding his time. It doesn't appear that Suarez has the match to Jones car-wise right now. No, but he stayed there. He's done well. You know, and this isn't the time. This this racetrack's still going to go through a change. It's not time to win this race yet. Uh, Daniel Suarez, if he's done anything that I've watched him as he's been in this series a little bit more, he's become a little bit more patient, not feeling like he had to press the issue. This isn't the time that he can win. He could certainly put himself in a spot to lose this race tonight. So he's understanding that these races are a little bit longer. Let's wait and let it come to us. I was thinking about that with a car right in front of him as well. Jeremy Clements now a lap down was battling maybe a little less hard uh, simply because he does not need to lose points tonight. 20 points below the cutoff line for the chase. Clements has to be just a little bit careful in the 51. So Jones weaving, making his way through lap traffic, trying to distance himself from teammate Daniel Suarez here at Iowa Speedway. The Xfinity Series is on CNBC next weekend. The future stars of the sport challenge the road course where it always comes down to the wire. Xfinity Series racing from Watkins Glen next Saturday, 1.30 Eastern on CNBC. So most cars have been down pit road one time for Sunoco Fuel and Goodyear tires. There have been a couple others that made a second stop. And J.J. Yaley, 13th now after that stop that made him the leader when he took fuel only last time falling yeah. back to 13th because Jones has been so strong. Yeah, but that's probably a gain for him from where he started, where he was running. So it, it's really an experiment that got him up front, showed him exactly what they can do, and uh, put him in a position to maybe look later in the race at making a move very similar to that. Jones now lapping around the 33 car of Brandon Jones, who is 18th, plowing his way through the field. Well, this car just works so well, and he does a good job of managing all that. And as the leader, as you come up on this traffic, you know, you're, you're, the car's in front that you're getting ready to lap. They're getting the passing flag. So, you know, he's taking advantage of all of that, but doing an outstanding job. And when your car works this well, and you can pass inside, outside, wherever you catch this, then that helps you a lot. Elliot Sadler's got a car very much like that. He's moved up inside uh, into the third position as he passed Sam Hornish. Down the back stretch goes Sadler. He's six seconds behind the leader, though, who has distanced himself quite a bit at this point. Four seconds behind second place. Yeah, and a lot of that he lost on that start that we showed earlier. Talked about how he felt back to sixth, and and uh, so that that hurt him uh, trying to get through the traffic and everything. So Elliott has a good car. He understands that he knew his job was going to be to to beat these Joe Gibbs racing cars tonight. Sam Hornish Jr., the 37-year-old from Defiance, Ohio, in that two car. 
had not raced this season until he was called to race here in June for Joe Gibbs Racing, and then got the call to come back here for Richard Childress Racing in that two car. Here's his teammate, Ty Dillon. And Dillon, as we mentioned, not that happy with his car in qualifying, did not make the final round, doing a nice job recovering here. Yeah, and, and as you watch these drivers, they're all, there's two cars, the first and second car of Joe Gibbs Racing are running laps when they're kind of clear of traffic in the 23 second bracket. Then you get the other cars that are about three tenths of a second off of what they're running. So, you know, that's just the separation of them right now, how much better they are, especially in the longer runs. Their cars just keep performing uh, at a little bit higher level right now. And just to remind everyone, Eric Jones has not won at this racetrack. He has been fast. He's never started at the front of the field. It seems like he's always starting in the rear for one reason or another, including in June. And remember what happened, that odd thing with a fuel cell issue. They had to come down into the garage area, fix that, and finish the race many laps down. So success here for him, not a given. Looking good so far tonight. I should have made him start in the rear tonight and see what <laughs> happened. I think he could have driven his way through there and been fun to watch. But he's having to drive past everyone anyways. He's putting a lot of these uh, drivers and teams to lap down. He's lapped up to the uh, through 17th spot now. So just 16 cars on the lead lap right at this moment. So, DJ, we're coming up on sunset here in Newton, Iowa, about a half hour from now. How much is this track going to change in the next 30 to 45 minutes? Yeah, I think turn three and four, you're not going to see much because we've seen that be kind of in the shade from the very beginning of this race. So I think it's probably cooled off to the point that you're not going to see much change there. Still, turn two is a lot in the sun. So it's going to take a little while. I think you'll see some change with that. Uh, but drivers, I think right now, are able to tell their crew chief what their car is doing and what changes they might be wanting to look at for this next pit stop. See the 90 there of Mario Goslin. That Ty Dillon is looking underneath now. And there's Keslowski, sixth at the moment, not pressing the issue too much. I'm sure he's had some feedback for crew chief Brian Wilson. Trying to figure out what next to do for this 22 car. Yeah, and Brad understanding right now that his car still isn't what he wants. We thought they reported earlier that his car was a little tight in the center of the corner and so Brad is probably one that, that can drive the car wants it to turn a little bit better where he gets a better run off the corner so he'll continue to make adjustments knowing that he's going to have another opportunity or two to do that through pit stops to free this car up some back up front with Eric Jones Ralph Dave I've listened to a lot of drivers on scanners over the years and this is one of the quietest drivers I've heard in a long time we're on about a 60 lap run here and Eric Jones has said basically nothing since that last competition caution came out and they pitted. He is very comfortable apparently behind the wheel of that race car and they are just clicking off laps. Ralph keep an eye on Dakota Armstrong who is hanging on to a top 10 run that's very significant because in 91 career Xfinity starts he's only got four top 10s total but he's doing a nice job his only complaint the car gets looser and looser they'd love him to run a little bit higher at on the racetrack especially in turns three and four can't really do that but still Dakota Armstrong has a good one going in the 18 they're going to make a pretty big swing at it under the in the next pit stop and Jimmy's happy to be healthy this week had to endure the uh, lingering effects of food poisoning the night before Indianapolis deal with that all day long in the heat there in the car <laughs> so seeing him this weekend looking much better is a good sign Brennan Poole trying to track down Josh Berry for eighth position. Actually, ninth Berry runs. Yeah, once again, Brennan Poole doing an outstanding job cutting in that 25th starting spot that he had. Didn't get the qualifying effort he looked for, but he was aggressive and patient at the same time as he worked his way through this to get himself situated in the top 10. He'll be able to make another adjustment, see if that can propel him toward the top five. And one of the things for Poole, he's just one of those drivers is now seeing, uh, as we see the battle here for fourth position, Ty Dillon looking in, and David Starr in the 93 going to become a factor here as now Hornish gets bottled up behind him. Ty will make the pass on the inside. 
Yeah, and I think this is a situation that Sam Hornsby's car just isn't where he wants it to be. He understood this is a teammate that's coming there. No reason to press the issue right at this moment, so he was letting Ty have that spot. Good run for Ty, though, to move up to that fourth spot. Keslowski lingering, lurking in sixth. Guess you don't linger. Oh. Boy, Hornish is loose. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not comfortable with watching him. I can't imagine how bad that is driving it. And you can see he lost that fifth spot to Brad Keselowski right there. Sam really just having to hang on right at this point. Well, he told us in countdown, loose, the front end of the car, loose in the back end of the car. I think that's still where they are right now. So there's Yaley in the 44 being put a lap down after that sort of bold strategy to get him up front. He is 15th and he's been lapped by Eric Jones. Jones in control, navigating traffic here at the Iowa Speedway, trying to keep it together as others try to figure out how to get back to the front and get around the young driver from Michigan. I trust you. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular gives you a stronger signal where the other guys don't. By Ford. We go further so you can. And by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Thanks for joining us tonight at the Iowa Speedway. Dave Burns, Dale Jarrett, Ralph Shaheen, and Jim Knoll will bring you all the action here, along with our away crew here at NBCSN. Pocono is the site of the Sprint Cup Series race tomorrow, but tonight it's all about short track racing at night at the Iowa Speedway. And Eric Jones has been all about leading, DJ. Yeah, just a really fast car. But I tell you right now, Blake Cook is doing everything that he can to stay on the lead lap. He knows how important this would be. All of those drivers that we talked about being on the bubble around that 12th spot have all been put a lap down. Blake Cook trying to keep himself on the lead lap here, just hoping for a caution at the right time that would benefit him. Cook enters tonight's race on the Chase Standings bubble for the Xfinity Series. 19 points to the good. And just below him then, Ross Chastain and Jeremy Clements and Dakota Armstrong. He's doing a really good job of making that second groove work and keeping Eric Jones at bay for the moment. Ralph with more on our leader. Brandon Lines is a spotter tonight for Eric Jones. And right now, he's the most talkative man on the radio with the 20 car. And he's not just telling what his lap times are or if he's up alongside the door. Dale, one of the things he's doing is telling him the tendencies of the drivers in front of him. That's very important and really helping Eric 
put in these quality smooth laps because now Eric has an idea of where the car in front of him is going to go, where that driver is comfortable, which allows Eric to then react. Yeah, very beneficial, and that's very helpful as a driver. You don't have time to take in everything that's going on up in front of you, so the more information that you can get there, the more helpful it is. And then as you approach these cars, uh, you understand their tendencies, where they're running, what they can do, and that will help you navigate through that traffic a little bit better. Eric Jones was eventually able there to put Blake Cook a lap down. We have a caution. Caution on the track. I think I saw the 90 car smoking up in turns three and four. He's had motor issues. Uh, he had motor issues last week, did Mario Gosselin, and unfortunately, a little smoke. Hope that it's nothing terminal for him, but we'll see. As NASCAR brings out the caution for safety reasons, slows this field down to a crawl, and drivers and teams will have another chance to figure out what they can do <laughs> to try to beat Eric Jones and Blake Cook, yep. he got the free pass. Yeah, he raced hard there and was able to at least keep himself in that position. That's going to separate him from those other drivers that will be a lap down now. That was 68 green flag laps right there. So the drivers really have an understanding of what their cars will do now in the long runs. They can make some adjustments for that. In fact, I was just about to point out that Ryan Sieg would then be chasing down the 11 of Blake Cook uh, to try to get that free pass position, but it came out at just the right time for Cook. Sieg now running a lap down, will not get that opportunity. He's in 14th position. And as we mentioned, those drivers battling near the cutoff line for the Xfinity Series chase to get in on points. Pit road is open, the green light is displayed, and Eric Jones is gonna lead the field to pit road. Those that are on the lead lap first time by. 40 miles per hour down pit road. Coming to you, Jim. Loose in, loose off is the main problem for Brad Keselowski right now. They're telling him that he is just a little bit too loose to run the line he wants to, as we've been telling you. So four Goodyear tires will go on, Sunoco fuel going in, and we'll send it over to Ralph. For our race leader, he's tight and a little bit of lost grip, of course. That's because of that long run, snug in the center. So they're gonna put four tires and fuel on it. For Daniel Suarez, four Sunoco, four Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel, and they're going to continue to make a wedge adjustment, taking it down again, basically going just a little bit further than where they did the last time. There's your Geico race off pit road, won this time by Elliott Sadler, jumps up two positions and will be the race leader when we come back to Iowa. Sadler, former winner here at Iowa, back in the position he wants to be in, control of the 250 lapper here at Iowa.
we welcome you back to the NASCAR Xfinity Series U.S. Cellular 250 here at the Iowa Speedway. Sun going down on what has been a spectacular day weather-wise. Temperatures just got into the low 80s. A little hot for qualifying earlier today, but nice temperatures now for the race. Jim, what's up with Justin Allgaier? Well, you know, he's worked through a lot of things tonight, Dave. They had a problem with the rear shock in the spring. Justin said it just felt weird. It felt like the car was not in the racetrack. So they made big changes, four tires, gave a wedge adjustment and a track pressure adjustment, or excuse me, a track bar adjustment on the seven car. They're hoping that fixes that right rear problem, Ralph. Before the race got started, Daniel Suarez told me, he said, my biggest challenge here is going to be long distance runs. Well, that last second of green flag laps was almost 70 laps in length. About 30 laps in is when the car started to feel to him like it was falling off the pace. He also said that car needs to fire off better, which means this restart they're about to see is going to be critical if he doesn't get a good start. Guys, thanks as we get ready for the resumption of the race. Elliot Sadler gained a position on pit road. He is the car in charge, and he's chosen the outside line, DJ. Yeah, I like that idea. Uh, that I think that that's going to be the preferred line uh, as we get further into this race. We have more restarts. I think that you're in control. I think it's a better place to restart from, and it gives you a better uh, angle going into the turn one and making a good run off of turn two. Pace car drops safely out of the way. Green back out in Iowa. Sadler with his best opportunity right now to take it away from Eric Jones. Powering out on the outside. Good run off turn two. That's a good move. That 20 car's got a lot of power. Gets up off the corner, but Sadler able to stay out front. Now shuts the door on the inside. Jones has to settle back. They're side by side behind him for third. Ty Dillon takes care of that. Suarez to fourth. Hornish in the two in fifth. A little high there for Eric Jones, or is he finding a line? Yeah, this is really impressive for Elliott Saturday. They were not happy with their race car yesterday in practice. Got uh, the six car over against the wall coming out of turn two once again. Trouble again for Bubba Wallace in the six. Earlier today, got the right rear corner of that car messed up. So we'll take another quick break here at the Iowa Speedway. Back with more green flag racing in a minute.
NASCAR Drive is NASCAR.com's live race day companion. Select your in-car video or camera angle, access integrated driver stats, lap-by-lap -lap commentary, and social conversation in real time. You won't miss a lap when you visit NASCAR.com slash drive on your personal computer now. These engineering marvels are about to take the green flag again after a quick caution for Darrell Wallace Jr. who rejoins the race in 31st position. Hasn't been a good night for him. Free pass went to the guy you were just on board with, the 62 of Brendan Gaughan. Brendan Poole, Brad Keselowski ready to take the green here again at Iowa. Pace car off, down to the pit lane. Elliott Sadler again in control of the field. He mashes the gas and comes to the start finish line for green. Ty Dillon making a move here, three wide into turn one. Good look by the three. Jones is going to squirt through the middle, and he will take the lead again. Yeah, and that really forced Elliott Sadler in a spot that he wasn't comfortable with. Damage for Ryan Priest. Sure there was some contact in that scuffle on the restart. They're trying to get so much here, DJ, at these green flag restarts. Well, this is when you have to try to make everything happen. Sometimes it gets jammed up. You think things are going. All it takes is somebody to spin the tires a little bit. You have to back off and you, somebody runs into the back of you. Ryan Priest came in 16th on the chase grid. And remember, for the Xfinity Series, you only get 12 making it into the chase. So he was below that cut line, and that's not going to help him. And after things sorted out there in the front, we've got the Joe Gibbs racing cars back out front. So Jones, Suarez, Sadler, and Ty Dillon, and trouble for the other Johnny Davis racing car. Ross Chastain is in trouble in the four. The 62 have gone. Taking a look at him as well. Could there have been contact there? Caution is back out. Now you're looking back at Priest, who we were looking at earlier from the restart damage. But over in turns one and two, something went on with his teammate Ross Chastain in the four. Perhaps the 62 of Brendan Gaughan. Priest needs to get that car to pit road. So Chastain in the four was 19th a lap off the, play, at the pace when he had difficulties. Came in 13th in the chase standings. And here's what happened to Ross as you look from Brendan Gaughan's onboard camera. Oh, he just got loose, DJ. Got uh, very loose. Oh, Brendan Gaughan. Good job, good job, bud. <laughs> I don't know if that radio was synced up right there, but that's a little late if it was. <laughs> Brendan did a nice job. He really didn't have much choice. He went in there, committed to the top side, but did a nice job of staying committed and just sliding by. Whoa. Yeah, good thing he likes the high side because it saved him that time. Here's a late look. Here goes Brendan. Come on, come on, come on. Got it. Uh, Just grazed the wall. Yeah, good job by Ross, too, to keep it out of the wall. We'll slow it down a little bit. And Brendan, I bet he wish he had all this time to think about it, but nice reaction by the driver of the 62. Yeah, right there he's just committed and you're just hoping at that point that you know the car that's up there that they've got the brakes locked down and they don't continue they just give you enough room to slide through and that's what brendan gone did stay committed good job the 44 of jj yaley gets the free pass on this particular caution and on the restart we know that ryan priest had trouble chastain's teammate here's what happened you see him in the red car on the inside the zero one Oh, David Starr coming through just grazes him. Got a great jump a little bit early. Yeah, Ryan was just kind of taking it easy there, doing the job that he should there in, in that position. When you're in the middle of the pack, you're just kind of watching things. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. Jim? And well, here's the deal with Ryan Priest after that contact. They asked him to come down pit road because he definitely had a tire rub. He waited a lap or two and then came down. Then when Ryan Priest came back out, he dragged the jack all the way down pit road, about five pit stops stalls into the box of Ty Dillon. The offending jack is now back here on pit road. You see it right there. And uh, just insult to injury for Ryan Priest and a, a tough sequence for Johnny Davis Motorsports overall. Yeah, that's never good. Not good for the jack or the race car. 
And we saw David Starr kind of moving to the inside. You're not allowed to pass until you get past the start finish line on the restarts. Uh, so he's kind of taking evasive action there too, but clipped the zero one. Yeah, it looked like he had laid back and tried to get a run on the restart a little bit and kind of was trying to anticipate things moving forward a little more quickly to where when he got to the line that he had a good head of steam up and things just slowed down from that point. Couldn't quite miss Ryan Priest in the 01. This is the sister car to Ryan Sieg, both fielded by the Sieg family. Here you go. So he's already lost the jack and now the right front wheel isn't turning either. So a tough night for him. Ryan doing a lot of racing this season, still racing in the modifieds and racing for Johnny Davis Motorsports for the first time in 2016. Not maybe having the rookie year that he was hoping for in this series, but there's still time. We mentioned at the start of the broadcast, eight races to the chase and a lot of different disciplines for them, DJ. Yeah, it's opportunities are going to come week in and week out and you just have to make the most of those. It's a tough division, hard racing, and and uh, you just have to, when you have that chance and you have the car, you got to take advantage of those opportunities and those nights. Ralph? We've talked about how good Eric Jones' car is. Elliott Sadler's might be even better. Two pit stops tonight, no adjustments, just four tires and fuel on each stop. What might be his real key to a potential victory here tonight? The 24 Cup crew are the men that are working his machine when it comes down pit road. That's how he leapt to the front of the field during that last pit stop. These guys are on their game tonight. He could win it on pit road. Back under green, Eric Jones, the leader. There goes Elliott Sadler down to the inside, trying to get valuable positions on the restart. Ty Dillon to the high side. The two JGR cars leg it out just a little bit. Jones, then Suarez, and then Dillon settles in in third. Yeah, really seeing that second lane be an advantage here on the restarts, not only for the leader of the race choosing that, but as we see here, Ty Dillon able to go from fourth to third on this restart. Hornish and Keslowski side by side. That is the battle for fifth. And these are the kind of the six cars that have occupied these top six positions in different uh, spaces for each of these drivers at different times, but these are the ones that seem to have separated themselves from the rest of the field at this moment. Brad trying to take that position. See if the last adjustment helped the 22 car any on this run. And he will fall in just ahead of Hornish now, solidly in fifth. Back in the pack, gone. Still on the high side, the white and blue 62. Came down pit road, we saw the crew checking things out on that car after his near brush with disaster and a slight brush with the wall. And he's moving forward this time it is the good thing for him. The last time when he had the free pass, he had to start behind everyone. And this time he's able to get up and restart with the lead lap cars. Made a huge difference in trying to end that high side. Seems to be working out for him that he was the first one to get up and start clearing off early in this race. Gone and Allgaier, the 7 and the 62, they battle for 8th position. Drew Herring in the 28th looking for a way through. Nice run by Drew Herring in this 28 car. He doesn't get many opportunities uh, throughout the season to race. He tries to make the most of it. This is a racetrack that he's been here a couple of times with Joe Gibbs racing. So doing an outstanding job tonight. And another racer like Dakota Armstrong there in the 18. Agriculture, farming, livestock paid for him to go racing as a young man. His, uh, his family invented what they call hog slats. And that's where basically everything that, everything that Pig has done with goes, DJ. It's a huge business, and it's taken Drew Herring a long way in racing. Jim? Dave, you talked about the uh, series of dominoes that put Drew Herring in this car. He was so excited when we talked to him yesterday before practice, and he really thought he could do something with this race car. Shocked everybody by making it to the final round of qualifying. So far, his only complaint on that number 28 car, it loses rear grip on the long runs, but they don't think they're going to have many long runs, especially in the second half of this race, so they're pretty happy with where they are right now. Now, yeah, thanks for the update. They should be, DJ. Nice run for him. Hey, he's doing an outstanding job. Just moved into the night spot, or still battling for that. Battle for 16th right here. Sieg wants it from Jones. 
Yeah, they're battling for the free pass if a caution should happen to come out. Very important. You know, as we talked about, Dave, on these short tracks, there's a lot of different battles going on for different uh, spots and, and for different reasons, and that could be very big for Ryan Sieg if the caution would come out to be able to get that free pass back on the lead lap. And he just missed it the last time. He was about to go chase down Blake Cook when the caution came out. Cook got the free pass. Sieg is in that position now. There's your leader, Eric Jones, has never won here in the Xfinity Series. He has two Truck Series wins here, trying to make an Xfinity Series win here tonight. Welcome back to the NASCAR Xfinity Series U.S. Cellular 250 from Newton, Iowa. West of famous dirt track racing in Knoxville, east of the state capitol, and a great place to be on a Saturday night with your family. And if you're here, you are watching a session by Eric Jones. Doesn't matter if he's restarted at the front of the field or a couple cars back, that 20 car has been on tonight, DJ. Yeah, yeah, and we knew coming in, he's just an outstanding racer, and, and this is where he made his mark, was on short track. This is a little faster short track than probably he raced on a lot of times, but he's proven that he's ready to take on a challenge of whatever the track may be. But what is that? Is it rhythm? Is it understanding? How, how does that translate here? Oh, big time. Crash in turn one, and that is Brandon McReynolds in the 24. Well, that's a hard hit. Driver's side, too. We wait for the sign. We see Brandon moving around in there. Yeah, Steering wheels off. A little bit loose in. And he's going to drop the window net and let safety crews know that he's okay. Yeah, see that left rear tire. Oh, I don't know if that happened after, but it sure looks like that that might have, he might have had a left rear to blow out there and created this incident. So McReynolds making just his second start of the season in the Xfinity Series. You see the, the Young Guns program by the owner, James Whitener, on this 24 car and 28 car trying to give young drivers opportunities. Brandon was making the most of his tonight until this. We're checking to see if we can get a good look at that. Reports we may have heard uh, a loud bang on his way into the corner there. Sometimes indicates he's lost that tire. First thing you do is give away your safety equipment there. They take that with them in the ambulance. Make sure the driver keeps that in his possession. All right, and listen closely as we take a look back. Oh, 
out. I don't think there's any doubt the way that car went around that the left rear tire went down as he started to enter the corner. And at that point, as a driver, you're just long for the ride. Yeah, that didn't happen after he hit. So that's what it looked like from the beginning. Glad to see him out and okay. Never like to see a driver, and that's your worst thoughts of the driver is hitting that driver's side. But these cars are very safe. NASCAR uh, makes them that way, and, and all the drivers are very appreciative of uh, all the safety initiatives over the years. So Brandon getting the mandatory ride to the infield care center in the ambulance, though he appears to be okay. And done for the night, that race car destroyed. And DJ, that can happen from running over something. It can happen from something rubbing in the chassis. And we yep. see now the leaders are going to hit pit road, led by Eric Jones. Jim, who have you got? Josh Berry is doing a great job behind the wheel, and he just radioed in before that caution. One of the asked if any of his teammates were getting looser. He's not. He feels he's got a really good race car. They'll put four Goodyear tires on it, make an air pressure adjustment, and fill him up with Sonoma racing fuel. Brad Keselowski just a little too loose to really race with the leaders, four tires and fuel for the 22, Well, Our race leader's a little tight in turns one and two, so he's going to get a slight chassis adjustment to go along with the four tires and fuel. The story with Daniel Suarez a little bit more complicated. He's taking four tires and fuel as well. He says he's loose in and loose off. He can deal with the majority of it. The problem is in the fact that the center of the corner, he needs to be better right in there, Dale. Right now, that center of the corner is what's keeping him from taking the lead. And same story on the Geico race off pit road. Eric Jones, the leader, loses a couple more positions. We'll come back, see how he recovers here in Iowa. NASCAR is on NBCSN. The Sprint Cup Series heads to Pocono Raceway this weekend to tackle the tricky triangle. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing from the Poconos tomorrow at 1 Eastern on NBCSN. The lead changed hands on pit road. The leader is now Ty Dillon. You ride with him. We'll be back to see how the restart goes for him here from Iowa.
crowd enjoying the racing here tonight at the Iowa Speedway, as have we. Hope you have as well. The U.S. Cellular 250, just a little past halfway, 95 laps to go, and you see certain cars getting the wave around. They'll be able to fall in behind the lead lap cars, get back on the, or at least get the one lap back. They're not allowed to pit, though. Yeah, but uh, Ross Chastain going to put him back on the lead lap, and I believe Jeremy Clements also is back on the lead lap. So as we look at the chase standings, big for those guys to be back on the lead lap. So looking up front, Eric Jones again, DJ, has lost positions on pit road, as has his teammate, Daniel Suarez. Yeah, Jones has lost five spots in the pits today. Suarez has lost ten spots. We talked about them not having the cup pit crews to come here. JGR decided not to do that, uh, utilizing some of their other efforts in doing that. The others have done that. Uh, as far as Ty Dillon and Elliott Sadler, they have their regular cup crews that are here pitting, making a difference. Could be huge if we have another call late in this race uh, as those drivers lose spots in there and try to make their way back to the front. Yep, if there's no time to regain, we've seen yep. the 20 be the fastest, but if there's no time, he'll be in a bad spot. The leader is Ty Dillon on the outside in the three car. To the inside, Elliott Sadler. Green is back out at Iowa. Tight racing down into the turn, still side by side, coming off two. And Dillon will clear. Ty Dillon to the lead. Sadler right there on his bumper, trying to get him loose and see if he can drive down underneath him once again in the turn one. Taking a look, you look on the right side of your screen, Daniel Suarez has had contact back in the pack. Hook oh. popping up on the 19, that's not good. No, that's, that's a lot of damage right there. And you wonder if maybe the cooling had been affected because obviously it was a, a hit to the front end there, Dale? Yeah, it could do a lot of damage inside there. It's a lot of aerodynamic damage. We talk about everything happening. In fact, they might have got jammed up on the restart. Let's see what happened as they came to green. He's behind the 88 of Josh Berry. Oh, and Berry doesn't go. No, I think he missed a shift right there. You know, there's one thing of spinning your tires, but I believe he was spinning, and when he went to shift gears, he didn't get it in what looked like third gear at that point in time. And remember, Daniel Suarez was back there because of a bad stop on pit road, running second, I believe, when they came down to pit lane. There's so many things that we talk about whenever you lose spots on pit road that just puts you in a different position than where you actually should be. And we've talked about Joe Gibbs racing and how outstanding their crews are in the Cup Series, the best on pit road week in and week out. But these are people that they're training, that they're learning. Different crews haven't worked with these drivers, so that makes a huge difference. We can see the effects of it right there. Jones now going for second on Elliott Sadler. Sadler using that second group to hold Jones back. Yeah, oh, Whoa. yeah, big move there. That was right in the middle there. See, Elliott really hit that spot, had the wheels turned a little bit, got extremely loose as he hit that bump in the middle of one and two. Going to cost him that second spot now. Jones sets his sights on Ty Dillon. Speaking of Ty Dillon, what an outstanding job he's doing. We watched him in qualifying. We had no idea we'd be seeing this kind of performance here tonight. He was very direct, but he was very down on how that qualifying performance went. Started 15th tonight, all the way to the lead. Trying to break a two-year drought is Ty Dillon. Back in 2014, he won at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Couldn't be more prestigious than that, and has not won since. So Sadler now trying to recover after that moment that he had in between turns one and two. And he'll get passed by Hornish. Hornish through to the third position. Sadler back to fourth. Keselowski riding in fifth. Justin Allgaier behind him in the seventh. Looks like Justin Allgaier's got his car a little bit better than what we've seen here tonight. We heard him talking about making some adjustments uh, that he was needing, not getting the feel that he wanted to. Jason Burdett uh, taking what his driver has given him and making some good adjustments. Got him a lot more competitive right now. And the car you're riding with, there is no taking going on. Brad Keselowski evaluating what's happening here in the Xfinity Series. The program not where they want it to be right now. Tonight, another good example. You know, they've had a lot of change there uh, from what they had when they were, you know, winning a lot of races, regardless of what driver, whether it's Ryan Blaney or, or Brad or Joey Logano. You know, you expect them to be right there with a chance to win, but they've had a lot of change. And, and you know, you go through times like that. All of these organizations do is they move people around and, and move them up. And that's what this is about. 
And so they're right now not got the program exactly where they want. Brad's trying to help them uh, get to that point. One of the time, one of the reasons he's here tonight uh, to help do that, plus his commitment to Discount Tire with a big sponsor of theirs. Jim is standing by with Brian and McReynolds. He brought up the last caution, Jim. That's right, Dave. He has been released, as you see from the infield care center. That was a huge hit from our vantage point. First of all, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I hate it for our JGL guys. We were actually running down the 33 for the lucky dog there and uh, got a little bit behind. But um, we were in the hunt for the lucky dog. That's all you can ask, I guess, first time out. I got to do a better job in traffic, but I uh, just appreciate the opportunity. And uh, hopefully they let me do it again soon. Was it a tire that let go? Yeah, I think so. I could kind of tell I was racing the 39 and the 33 for the lucky dog. I, I think that's who we were racing. And um, and uh, just kind of went away. We lost a couple of tents to do something wrong. And that was kind of the end of it. I have to see you're OK. Back to you guys. Yeah, that is good news. Nothing he could do at that point, DJ. No, uh, you're just along for the ride, and you just hope that the hit's not too hard. Even with safer barriers, those uh, times are, are hard, especially into the corner. Look at the damage on Josh Berry's car. We suspect he might have missed a shift. The Hall of Famer here calling what he saw on that restart. Daniel Suarez slamming into the back end. Suarez getting the worst of it, but still on track. Has not gone to pit road. No, but he's lost a lot of time. Certainly not going to be where he expected. You can see Eric Jones running down Ty Dillon here, getting closer for the lead. Ty Dillon still able to stay out front. Trying to track him down. Ty Dillon leading the first laps ever of his at Iowa Speedway. We'll be back with more as we go NASCAR nonstop. You were keeping your eyes on that battle for the lead. Ty Dillon didn't give it up by any means. Eric Jones pressuring him though, with just 74 laps to go now here at Iowa. And Ty trying to make that three car real wide against Eric Jones. Yeah, and even when you have the best car, which it looks like the 20 car is the best car, after you get so many laps on the tire, it makes these passes more difficult. Ty making it difficult, gonna make him go around on the outside pretty much right now. That's his plan. <laughs> and sometimes those plans don't necessarily work out. We see Daniel Suarez is on pit road finally, Ralph. 
Yeah, they were waiting for a caution, thinking that might be uh, when they could go do repairs to the car. Temperatures got too hot. He came down Pimp Road. They worked on their front grill. What they were really focusing on was the radiator area, and apparently that is just too damaged. Their night is over. Daniel Suarez crawls out of the car. Big disappointment. The good news, of course, is that they are locked into the chase by virtue of their where they stand in the points, but the fact that he has that win. And so you will see him in the championship run, but not for Daniel Suarez tonight. DJ, we were talking earlier, I think uh, off, off camera, as we see the battle here between sixth place Brad Keselowski and seventh place Josh Berry, about how the 20 car hadn't seen the dirty air all night, right? Yeah. Now he's behind the three. It's a different story. Uh, it's definitely a different story. You get a feel, different feel with your race car. You know, yeah, he's been around other cars and approached them, but he was the leader, and these were slower cars that he's dealing with. He now has to deal with Ty Dillon, who has a race car that's almost as fast, but he's able to, to keep it in front of him and kind of take away his line, so he's making life kind of difficult for Eric Jones. And this all goes back to pit road. Ty Dillon was able to get off pit road first, Jones was off third, and so he hasn't been able to get by. The leaders have been on pit road three times, and each time the 20 car has lost positions, and that has been his downside. The upside is, as DJ mentioned, the car very, very fast. Josh Berry not giving up. Now he's going to get that spot from Keselowski. Berry to sixth. Yeah, he's done a great job. I, that spoiler looks way up in there. It's probably got this car a little bit tight, uh, more so for him, but he's doing a nice job. So we saw Daniel Suarez on pit road. Ralph is with him. Well, Daniel Suarez has made his way back into the garage area here. Daniel, can you tell me a little bit about what happened? It looked like the 88 just didn't roll in front of you. Well, I'm not sure of that. I don't know. Uh, I don't really know. I just know that he has stopped pretty aggressive in front of me. And at that point, there's nothing you can do. Uh, I think it's our foul to be back there with those guys frustration to get stuck back there guys again that's because of that pit crew this is a group that had never worked together their first pit stop together as a crew was their first stop tonight and Ralph that is only his third failure to finish an Xfinity Series race in 54 starts so that's not something he's used to yeah and as he said that is a situation he was wide open in the gas it looked like the restart was happening and all of a sudden the car you know doesn't go in front of you uh, after you've all taken off so it was unfortunate i'm sure it put a hole in the radiator the water went out he wasn't seeing the temperature go up because there wasn't any water there to show that the temperature was going up so unfortunate for him but as you pointed out he's got a win he's in the chase and they'll he'll you know go on and, and try to get another victory here as we move forward and as Brennan Poole tries to take seventh place around Brad Keselowski, we'll take it back up front to Ty Dillon. You won't miss a thing because you're going NASCAR nonstop. Back with more at Iowa.
Watch every Xfinity Series race with the NBC Sports app and get closer with additional camera angles, driver stats, and track information. Available on mobile, tablet, and connected TV. Download the app and find out more at NBCSports.com slash live. And you are looking live at the leader, Ty Dillon, in the red three. Leading his first laps ever at the Iowa Speedway in the Xfinity Series and trying to outdistance a very fast Eric Jones in the 20 car. Yeah, we saw Eric Jones had pulled right up on his bumper, trying to make a pass earlier. I'm not sure that Eric Jones hasn't decided that, let's save some tire here. This has the makings of a long run possibly to the end, and he's a good short track racer, and see if, he, if this is exactly how the race plays out, he'll have more at the end. Jim? Well, I can assure you right now that it wasn't a big adjustment that they made on the three-car last pit stop, but one round of wedge has made all the difference for Ty Dillon. It tightened him up just enough to do exactly what you see there. Kind of hooked the bottom in turns three and four, and Ty Dillon has extended that lead. Of course, we have to see exactly what Eric Jones is doing right now. Huh, Ralph? Well, Eric Jones started from the front row tonight. He's led on three different occasions for 138 laps. The last adjustments they made to the car were the smallest ones they've made all night. Just a little bit of a slight chassis adjustment to go along with four tires and fuel. You might be right, Dale. He might just be setting himself up for a run to the finish. Let's take a look at today's Toyota driver update as we go on board with Eric Jones. We can see he runs second. Dakota Armstrong in his first run for Joe Gibbs Racing, a strong ninth. Drew Herring, the man that filled the seat for Armstrong, is running 12th, and Yaley, 14th in the 44 car. So, DJ, what do you think? They last pitted on lap 151. You think they could stretch it to the end with 53 to go here? Well, I think they can, but, and here's the reason. They didn't go back to green to lap 158. So, basically, uh, they were only looking, if you, you take into uh, account the caution laps, uh, about a 95-lap run, even though it's 93 actual laps that, that they would get to the end. But it's about a 95-lap run. That is the, the lower part of their pit window at this 7-8-mile track. So I think that they can do that. Might be wanting to take a little bit of, of time there, just ease out of it. We've seen that the times kind of settle out at basically 2470s and 80s for most of them. And so I think that they're just at a good pace that they can make it from here. The tires might become an issue uh, even before the fuel does by the end of this race. And it's not like he didn't try him on the restart. Eric Jones made an attempt. Ty Dillon held him off. If we go green to the end here, it'll be a 93-lap run, which has never happened at the 7 8 mile short track here in Iowa. We'll go NASCAR nonstop and be back with more Green Flag Racing.
<clears throat> At Iowa Speedway, the lead has stabilized a bit, eight tenths of a second. You see the difference there between Ty Dillon in the three and Eric Jones in the 20. Just a couple of seconds back to Hornish Jr. in third and Elliot Sadler who runs fourth. And Dale Jarrett, as we look at this long green flag run, we know that that Goodyear tire is very durable, but it does fall off with this racetrack being so rough. Yeah, and you know, it's just a worn surface, so you want as much grip as you can, but they start these cars, they ran really hard uh, around here at the, after that last restart, uh, trying to position themselves, get themselves in the right spot, and so you can wear the tires out if you're not careful. So it's going to be interesting to see who has the better setup and who has done a better job of taking care of their tires, because you really easy to attack this, but if you wear the tires too much, you're not going to have anything left in those last 20, 25 laps. So with 42 laps to go, this time by the start finish line, let's take you through the field and let's start with Jim Noble. Well, Dave, you are looking at a very hungry race car driver behind the wheel of that number three. Ty Dillon has gone 65 races since his last victory in Indianapolis in 2014, but he tastes it right now. He radioed back and said this is the best the car has been all night. Remember, when he finished second here in June, it was because the balance of the car was perfect. Right now, it's darn close to that right at this moment, Ralph. Well, our second place car, Eric Jones, for the first two thirds of the night was by far the best race car on on the track, not on pit road. He can go the distance on fuel, and he's hoping that he can keep the car green flag out on the track and not have to tax this pit crew that hasn't had a lot of experience together. Behind him comes Sam Hornish. Sam Hornish is also very good on fuel in that number two. He's the winner of the June race here, and he's just a little bit tight, hoping that the long run, he'll be fine when they get to the end. Behind him, running in fourth place, is the man who has the best crew working on pit road tonight. Elliot Sadler, in this number one, would not mind having to make another pit stop because the 24 Cup crew is servicing his car, and they've been excellent tonight. His problem, though, is he's a little bit short on fuel. He might need to come to pit road, Jim. Did I mention hungry race car drivers? How about Justin Allgaier, who passed Brad Keselowski to get into the top five a few laps ago? 62 races since his last victory, Montreal 2014. Allgaier reports that the car has been loose. They made a lot of adjustments to this number seven, primarily track bar and wedge. The car has come to life when the sun has gone down. Right now, Justin Allgaier very happy with the number seven car. And Brennan Poole has moved into sixth place. Brennan Poole, another one, along with teammate Justin Marks. A lot of changes to his 48 car, but he's always had speed. He was very happy after practice last night. Thus far, his only concern as the race goes on, as we get into a long green flag run, he loses rear grip. We'll have to see if that prevents Brennan Poole from moving up any further, Dave. And Jim, as we continue through the field, thanks to Credit One Bank, we look at the sixth place driver. Actually, the seventh place driver now, Josh Berry. What a good run for this short track racer. May have missed the shift on one of the restarts. Damage to the race car, but still going strong in that particular run. DJ, the 18 of Armstrong as well. Yeah, Dakota Armstrong done a good job uh, inside the top 10 all night. Probably trying to keep up with the racetrack, make adjustments, uh, but still inside uh, the top 10 here doing a good job. And the 22 of Brad Keselowski running ninth. Not able to go much further forward in that Ford tonight. Again, coming all the way from Pocono to race here tonight and continue improving that program for Team Penske. Keselowski, a former winner here, running in in ninth. Yeah, and in the 10th spot is Ryan Reed. One of the better runs that we've seen this team have. Uh, he's been really good, been aggressive all night, sitting there in the 10th spot. Now, this is a run that this team could really use right now. And Brendan Gaughan recovering from earlier troubles in the 62 car, narrowly avoiding a big wreck, saving the 62, has brought it to 11th place as we've taken you through the field with Credit One Bank. Your leader is on the left. That is Ty Dillon. He's gotten around his teammate, Brandon Jones, in the 33 to put him a lap down. Second place, the yellow and black 20 of Eric Jones, still trying to chase him down. And Ralph made such a good point. 
Jones really doesn't want to come back to pit road. He'd love to chase him down under green, DJ. Now, I'm just going to be interested to see if this plays out. Ty Bill has done an outstanding job positioning himself here, getting the lead, taking care of his race car, staying out front in, in front of the 20. But is Eric Jones saving something for the end of this race? Battle for seventh right here. Dakota Armstrong in the 18. Looking underneath Josh Berry. He's going to go for it in turn three. He's made a nice steady come through. He was outside the top 10 after that last restart. Done a good job of coming up through. I think that spoiler up in the air is hurting the 88 car of where Daniel Suarez got into the back of him. I believe that's hurting him, probably getting a little bit tight throughout this run. And tight quarters right there. Armstrong had to back off in the 18. Armstrong in that 18 car, part of the 1-2-3 qualifying for Joe Gibbs Racing again. Suarez was on the pole. Jones was second. And Armstrong really raised some eyebrows and impressed in third place. And he's not given up this fight for the seventh position. No, uh, but it looks like that Josh Berry is going to make him make this pass more difficult and try to make that pass on the outside. When you have a tighter car, getting to the bottom, maybe helping the apron, uh, letting it help you turn the car in the center where you can drive up off with a tight car. And you can see that's kind of where he's able to hold Dakota Armstrong at bay right now is uh, with the exit of the corner. 30 to go here at Iowa. DJ, what we need is like a 30 to go short track sponsor. This is like old <laughs> days at Hickory or wherever you raced growing up. 30 to go here on the 7 8 mile. Armstrong working him hard. The last time he finished in the top 10 was at Daytona in July of last year. Dakota making the most of his run in the 18 to 9. He's going to get that spot. Battle for the lead on the left. Closing up. We wondered, is the 20 saving anything? Or is his car just coming to him now in the late laps? This is a smart race car driver and a fast race car. And he understood. He could kind of see what this race was turning out. We had a long run, 68 laps back earlier, green flag run. He could kind of see that this race may play out that way. We'll see if that works to his advantage here. Ty Dillon doing an outstanding job. He's going to make it difficult, make that three car awfully wide. And he wants to be the 10th different short track winner in the Xfinity Series in as many short track races. We talked about that in Countdown to Green. In addition to the fact that he's trying to break a big time losing streak. Already a winner in the series, but it's been a while. And you mentioned it too, DJ. Good on points as far as the Xfinity Chase standings are concerned, but would love that win to lock him in and be sure. Yeah, not only is it lock him in, but the confidence that it gives he and his race team as they move closer to the chase time. They know that they're a championship caliber team and driver, but they want to have that victory going in there. But Eric Jones gained a half second on this three car in the last five laps. They get around Ryan Sieg in that 39 car, putting him one lap in arrears. That's 15th position, Sieg in the 39. These drivers are really, really having to work hard right now. The tires are getting worn, tough racetrack, short track, driving hard to see who can get uh, up at the front. And as we look at the chase stand here, look down, I want to go all the way down to 15th. Dakota Armstrong, he might not be winning this race and securing his spot, but he started out the night 54 points outside that. He's really made a huge game. Good run tonight for Dakota. You see Chastain just below the cutoff line and Blake Cook with a solid run in a fast race car. 13th position on the track right now, 12th in the chase standings yeah, as they run. Exactly what he needed to do here come tonight. He's beating uh, his closest competitors there, putting some more distance. Dylan continuing to hold about a three-tenths of a second lead. You saw the distance there. This is the race for third position. Sam Hornish has the spot. Elliot Sadler trying to track him down in the one car. And we heard him talk that Elliott Sadler may be a little bit short on fuel. I do know that Elliott Sadler is one of the best at saving some fuel and getting a little bit more than what you might think uh, as you get through. Sam Horn is slipping up a little bit there, kind of opening the bottom for Elliott Sadler. And so these teams these days, DJ, they know at the start of a run, they might need to be in fuel conservation mode. It's always a discussion. Yeah, and, and Elliott started up front on that last restart. Looked like his car was a little bit too loose. It came to him, and he's continued to be very steady throughout this run and marching his way forward. But if he knows he's had to be in that situation, he might have more car than what we've seen to this. Jim Noble with more on Ty Dillon. 
Yeah, in fact, as soon as DJ was talking about fuel, we were checking with the three pit. Ty Dillon is okay to go the rest of the way, but he's only two laps to the good. That's a pretty small margin. This is not a very big racetrack. And of course, if the specter of NASCAR overtime is looming, that could get a little dicey. Great point, Jim. Both races here last year went to overtime. And if you have to go beyond the scheduled distance, there's a procedure for that, but you better have fuel. Well, we're going to have 20 laps of a shootout right here. You can see Ty Bill Dillon had to be very aggressive there, had to make a three-wide move uh, in, in keeping the lead, allowed Eric Jones to get a little bit closer to him. You saw Brennan Poole take fifth away from Justin Allgaier. What an outstanding run. Started 25th with this 48 car tonight. Drove into the top five. Really, really outstanding job. Been giving us these great looks all night long with our onboard camera. And we will take you to the end of the race. No more breaks for us before the checkered. Seeing if Ty Dillon can hold off Eric Jones and Brennan Poole. See if he can pick up any more spots before the night's over. Here is the distance. The leader on the left. That's Ty Dillon. 20 trying to track him down. Yeah, we could and lap traffic could make a difference in this too as to where they catch them. What lane they allow them to take, could that uh, allow Eric Jones to close up even more? You see Garrett Smithley kindly dropping down to the inside in the zero car, letting the leaders go by. Blake Cook is on the lead lap and in 13th position in that 11 car. Yeah, and we saw earlier when he was getting lapped by Eric Jones, he made it very, very difficult for Eric Jones. And we can see the three car, the bottom is where he would prefer to race. See what he can do. Again, Cook doesn't have to give up that position, certainly would want it. Should a late caution come out, he would move back around and perhaps be in the fight for the win. Slides to the high side a little bit there as we see Sadler now trying to get under Horners for third. Yeah, he's been trying to make this move. Sam Horners has been sliding up, looks like he's losing a little bit of grip. Sadler takes that third spot. The one into third, and the three goes by the 11. Here comes Eric Jones, slowed him down just a bit, DJ. Yeah, this is in one opportunity, the one he was looking for. Ty Dillon got a good run off a of turn four still. Ty drives it in deep, tries to ignore the nose of the 20, but he gets a little bit high. Here comes Eric Jones in the 20 on the inside. Yeah, Ty Dillon's gonna have to really try to force Eric Jones to stay down, pin him down more than he wants to down here in turn three and four, see if he can make that high line work. Jones, who qualified second today, very fast race car, led a lot of laps in this race. He's gonna retake the lead from Dillon. Dillon fights back on the outside. 15 to go, and Ty Dillon trying to hang on, and he gets way too high that time. Eric Jones moves through and assumes the lead. And we talked about the lap traffic. Could it be a, a possibility that that could come into play? Looks like Ty's car has just kind of gone away a little bit right now, though. He's up here trying to make this high line work. He ran so many laps on the bottom. That bottom works great, but you can certainly use up your tires by continuing to run there. He can't hustle it right now. Yeah, and I really believe that Eric Jones was sitting back there saving his tires for the right opportunity to come along. We got inside 20 laps. He started making a charge towards Ty Dillon. Eric Jones to the lead in the 20 car. Has not won here in NASCAR Xfinity Series competition. A two race winner so far this season, trying to make it a third and solidify his role at the top of the chase standings with a possible championship run later this fall. So Ty Dillon back to second, Elliot Sadler five seconds behind this battle up front and with just 12 laps to go this time by Jones is going to try to keep Dylan back there does Dylan have anything that he saved yeah I think that he just ran his car so hard out front trying to keep as much of an advantage and hope that he wasn't using it up and hoping that maybe the 20 had run hard there's a couple of runs that he made at him but uh, I think it was pretty obvious this has been the best car all night uh, but Ty Dillon's done a great job with it with his race car especially once they got him out front and the possibility that there have been any miscalculations in the fuel run right now they haven't stopped since lap 151 that's a long way to go yeah it's a long way to go we'll have to see we know that uh, these Toyotas get good uh, fuel mileage they do a great job of calculating this and, and you know was Eric Jones doing two things saving his tires and saving a little bit of fuel at the same time to ensure that he has enough to get to the end 10 to go this time by for Eric Jones as he moves underneath the 28 of Drew Herring. Herring on the lead lap until now. Herring's in that 12th spot. Outstanding job he's done too in this race car tonight. So Jones moves through. 
Here is the battle between the 18 of Armstrong and the 7 of Allgaier. That's for sixth. Yeah, Dakota Armstrong continues to move forward. That's going to be the sixth spot. Very, very impressive run for him here tonight in a race car that you're expected to do well in. Dakota Armstrong has stepped up and ran well. Nine laps to go for leader Eric Jones down the back stretch. This track high banked surface worn tires at their end at this point fuel nearing empty. Does Eric have enough to hold off the field. And DJ it looks like Ty is just trying to kind of nurse that car home at this point. Yeah I think that he's really it looks like that the front tires are kind of gone on the tire. He's got a nice lead over the third place car of Elliott Sadler about five seconds uh, uh, back to him. So I think that they're just trying to get to the end. They've made a solid run. They both had good runs but the 20 car is kind of in the class and and now he's kind of taken over if he's got enough fuel to get to the end. And you saw Ty Dillon in our chase standings has the most points of any driver that has not won this season. So he's in a good spot there. Sam Hornish Jr. making his second start of the season. It's right here at the Iowa Speedway this time in a different race car running for Richard Childress tonight has shown very well. Not quite the speed he had in June but running fourth right now. All guy in the seven moving through lap traffic. That's the 93 of David Starr the 39 of Ryan Sieg. All guy is the one in the lead lap. And he may be nursing it too. Looked like he was maybe slowing down, possibly saving a little fuel too. Yeah, but Sieg doing a good job in that 15th spot as he battles to stay inside that top 12 uh, for the chase standings. Five to go for leader Eric Jones. Can anyone run him down at this point? Will there be a late caution? Saw drivers having trouble earlier. They're all at their worst right now. The car's probably not handling well. Tires worn out. You never know. It's not, but he's just hoping that there is not that caution because we've documented he's lost spots on pit road every single time they've come there. So he doesn't want to see that scenario. I believe that right now that's the, really the only thing that could possibly cost him this race. And again, the running a run, making a long run on fuel takes a couple of things DJ it takes accurate measurements about how much fuel was put in the car based on weighing the can afterwards the engineer is seeing how far that car can go how much it's consumed on the night and the driver letting them know how much he's been using yeah we talked about the whole crew so the gas man's a part of that crew being new did he get this car completely full on that last pit stop Three to go for Eric Jones. What is he thinking behind the wheel? He knows that he may not have all the resources that he normally has here at the track tonight. The one thing he does have is speed. Going underneath the 42 of Justin Marks. There's Brendan Poole trying to take away uh, that fourth spot from Sam Hornish. He's going to do it easily down the backstretch. What a fantastic run. 25th to fourth for Brendan Poole. Two to go for the leader, Eric Jones. Slight bobble off the turn there, gathers it back together. Such a consistent race car, DJ, a race car driver, DJ, is Eric Jones. It's yeah, smart. been impressed with him. First time I watched him really was a truck race in Phoenix that he went on to win. Just outstanding uh, car control, and he showed that here again tonight. There is the white flag for Eric Jones. One more time around, does he have enough fuel? Will he encounter lap traffic that would slow him down so much that Ty Dillon could catch him? Doesn't look like it. Jones enters three, comes through four. The 62 moves to the high side. Eric Jones is going to come off oh, turn four. Over here, right there. My door, fellas, thank you. Jones will win at Iowa. You can see Dillon crosses in second. Third place goes to Elliott Sadler and Brennan Poole. That fantastic run from 25th all the way up to fourth. Even Dakota Armstrong drove his way up into the top five. Expectations high for Eric Jones. He presents part of the future for Joe Gibbs Racing in the Sprint Cup Series. We've all talked about it. We all expect it. But at every level, he is showing that he is championship-like material. Yeah, this is a, a driver on the fast track, if you will, to the Sprint Cup Series. So Eric unbuckling now, letting the window net down and coming around to the front stretch to get the checkered flag and I suppose give the fans a little bit of show here.
Third time he's been able to do that in 2016. And this time not on a concrete track, imagine that. <laughs> I think that he's shown that he's ready for the challenge of whatever track. You could be banking, yeah. uh, what that, you know, whether it's asphalt, concrete, whatever it is. It's a young man that knows how to make his car go fast around all of them. I'm thinking even the uh, cornfield out back here. Racing tractors, Eric Jones might be the guy. Very appreciative of the fans here tonight. They saw a great show and a comeback by the 20 driver. Eric Jones celebrating when we come back to the Iowa Speedway. We'll talk to all the top finishers, including that guy, the winner here at Iowa tonight. It's the World Series of Fighting 32, two title fights, two rematches, and an MMA first. Two brothers will face off in the Decagon. Don't miss World Series of Fighting 32, coming up after Xfinity Series Racing, right here. There is the winner, Jones, who has gotten his car down onto pit lane and heading for victory lane. And let's see how the chase standings look after race 19 of 33. Blake Cook hangs on to that bubble spot. 24 points now separate him from Jeremy Clements, who moved up. Yeah, Ryan Sieg had a nice night there. Ross Chastain lost a little bit of ground to that 12th spot. And Armstrong there we see came into the night 34 points behind and with a strong run in the 18 car has moved himself up in the driver's chase standings. And Jones' three wins there, we talked about the bonus points, DJ. Those apply to round one, and that can be a mover into round two. Yeah, you never know. We saw Kyle Busch last year in the Cup Series need that fourth win of his to get through the first round after Dover. Let's head to victory lane. Ralph Shaheen is there. All right, Eric Jones is here. He's going to crawl out of the car, and we're going to chat with him here as soon as he wipes his face off, throws on the hat. Here he comes. Your winner here at Iowa, Eric Jones, ready to stand up on top of the car, and the crew celebrates. All right, Eric, come on down here and let's chat. Congratulations, what a run today. So Dale Jarrett was thinking that maybe you were saving some tires there at the very end. Is that what you did? No, I wasn't saving much. I was really working as hard as I could to get around tie, and uh, it was uh, it was tough, man. The arrow the error game was pretty tough. It was just needed to get clean air for a long time, and. Burn a lot of tire off the DeWalt uh, Flexvolt Camry there at the start, but it's a, it's a great day, man. We had a great car, one that definitely uh, deserved to win the race. The fastest car I feel like won tonight, which is always a good feeling. But I uh, just want to say thanks to GameStop, Reesers, Hisense, Interstate Batteries, Toyota, uh, Xfinity, NASCAR, the fans, and uh, JGR Engines for getting us victory lane. But an awesome day for us. Fuel mileage is pretty good, too, at the end there. How close were you to being down on fumes? I don't think we were too close. I don't know how many more we could have gone, but... Uh, we definitely had enough the fuel pressure wasn't starting to move at all and uh, I was saving for the last 10 or so just to make sure we were on the side of it that we needed to be but uh, I felt good about it uh, Chris felt good about it but thanks to these guys it's just uh, a great race car we prepared I feel like we deserved to win here when we came here earlier this year we had a really fast car and nice to kind of get some redemption for that one it was a solid run go celebrate with your crew we head to Jim Noble all right we're here with Ty Dillon I know you could taste that one I know you did Everything you could behind the wheel. Tell us about the last 20 laps in the battle with Eric Jones. Man, um, I can't thank Johnny Morris and Bass Pro enough for giving us the opportunity to do this, first of all. But 
man, I want to win so bad, and we're close. That was that was all I had, and they're good right now. And it's you have to give it all you have every lap, and we just came up ten laps short this time. I'm proud of my guys. They gave me a great opportunity tonight. Um, I think the good Lord for giving us the opportunity to win races, and that's what we want to do. And we're, we're blessed to have this opportunity. But man, my heart's been broken every every race since Indy. I want to get in victory lane again, and we're close. It's just we, we got to get a little better. Was it just simply a case of the car going away? You had to run the high run yeah, line that worked for you in June pretty well. What did it turn out to be the difference? Yeah, the high line wasn't there. Um, every lap, I was having to do everything I could to keep him behind me. Um, trying to watch him and get in his line and he ran a good race and I just you know I did all I could to keep him behind me and it just wore my stuff out a little more than I needed to if I would have had a bigger gap but he could charge me and make me make mistakes he just had the better car there and uh wish I could have been a little bit more perfect tonight second place for Ty Dillon but he wanted one more spot Jim thanks Ty Dillon second tonight there's your race winner Eric Jones Checkered flag in hand for the third time in 2016. Remember, coming up next, it's the World Series of Fighting 32. Don't miss it right here on NBCSN. There is Victory Lane. That's where we find Eric Jones continuing to talk to everyone about what just happened here. Well, what just happened was a big victory, third one of the year for him. And some drivers who came from deep in the field to score top five finishes. Jim caught up with Brendan Poole. All right, what a job by Brendan Poole from 25th place to fourth. How did you do it? Because this is a place where the car usually goes away, doesn't come to you, but that car was so strong at the end. Yeah, you know, I just had some angels riding with me tonight. Uh, God was helping us out for sure on this one. But, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I just feel so blessed. Uh, uh, I'm so thankful to DC Solar for all they've done for me. None of this will be possible without them. But great night tonight, man. It was a lot of fun. Chad Norris made a bunch of great calls, got the car driving really good in the race. And, man, we just charged to the front. We're, you know, we keep saying we're a team of bulls. We fight to the end. we still got a long way left to go in this season. And I'm um, looking forward to the chase and, and uh, getting this 48 DC Solar machine in victory lane. Nice job. Congratulations. Thank you. A harder top five for Brennan Poole here in Iowa. DJ, how tough is that 25th to 4th? Yeah, you got to work hard. You know, we talk about it. It's a, a place that has multiple grooves, but you got to have a good car. He did a nice job of maintaining patience throughout the time and driving all the way inside the top five. You see your top 10 here. Josh Berry and Ryan Reed rounded out. 11 cars finished on the lead lap, including Brendan Gaughan, who got himself back there. Drew Herring just a lap down off the pace just a little bit. Yeah, outstanding run for him. Blake Cook there in 13th increased his uh, margin there in that 12th spot in the chase standings. You see the rest of the 40-car field, how they finished here this evening. Daniel Suarez in 30th. Trouble on a restart sent him to pit road and ended his night early. 
and Johnny Jackson rounds out the field here tonight. Jim caught up with Dakota Armstrong. Well, we talked before the race about high expectations for Dakota Armstrong in this 18 car. I think you delivered with the top five. How do you feel about the run? Because it looked good from our vantage point. Yeah, you know, um, first off, I got to thank God just being here. Uh, thank Matt Tiff for this opportunity. Everyone from Joe Gibbs Racing um, struggled there through the middle. We kind of fell back, um, but car came to life there at the end. Just thought I'd done a better job of holding on to the track position. I think we had a really good shot at, you know, a top three or so, but really happy with it. So a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. What does this do for your confidence in yourself? Yeah, you know, just know that I can do it. Um, just have to figure out what I need in these cars, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So hopefully we'll uh, keep improving and, and have a lot of fun. All right, if it turns out to be a cameo, a pretty good one for Dakota Armstrong. Career best finish for him, Jim. Good night for him. And coming up next here on NBCSN, don't forget, it's the World Series of Fighting 32. It's not just mano y mano. It's brother against brother. You won't want to miss it right here on NBCSN. So as we look back at the night, DJ, a lot of fun, short track racing at night for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Yeah, this race started out, uh, still had a very hot race track, uh, very slick. Bubba Wallace got into the wall off the of turn two, kind of uh, started out a bad night for him. A lot of side-by-side -side racing. Here's Brendan gone, Brendan gone on the outside of Ross Chastain and J.J. Yaley in the 44. Yeah, some outstanding two and three wide racing around this racetrack. A lot of fun to watch. That's why the drivers like this, too. Hang on, Brendan. Sees the four spinning in front of him. Takes evasive action. Just scrapes the outside wall and ends up the last car in the lead lap in 11. Here's what happened to Daniel Suarez. Josh Berry missing a shift, we think, on that restart, DJ. Yeah, something happened that the car just didn't go. As he uh, looked like he was up to power and then stopped. Uh, Suarez getting the worst end of that deal. And then the big move of the race for Eric Jones. He worked and worked to get around Ty Dillon. Dillon's car just seemed to go away. Jones back to the front. Well, Ty had to run his car really hard, trying to stay in front, trying to put enough distance. This wasn't enough. This was uh, the night for Eric Jones in this 20 car. And we talked about how some drivers would gain a little confidence heading into the Xfinity Series chase. I'm not sure Eric Jones needs any more, but he's got another dose of it here tonight. Yeah, they've been, they've been outstanding all year. You know, they've had some times that uh, they haven't finished races. He's made a few mistakes along the way, but that's part of the learning process for him. This is the driver that has certainly put himself in the position as the driver to beat for the championship this year. And celebrating with that crew who serviced the car all night long on pit road. Here's what's coming up Sunday. We start with NASCAR America at noon. Sprint Cup Series countdown to green at 1, and then it's racing from Pocono at 1.30. Of course, we'll wrap it up with NASCAR America after the race, and then IndyCar Series racing from mid-Ohio, finishing off the day with victory lap. Sure glad you joined us here tonight at the Iowa Speedway for Ralph Shaheen and Jim Noble, and my colleague next to me in the booth here, Hall of Famer Dale Jarrett. I'm Dave Burns saying thanks for watching here tonight. Coming up next, the World Series of Fighting is right here on NBCSN. Congratulations to our winner, Eric Jones, the youngest Xfinity Series winner here at the Iowa Speedway. We'll see you next time.